All right. Thank you very much. Bob, welcome. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to our um, another class and session of RM Smart Investing. And uh, again, we've had exciting days, exciting weeks, exciting months and years. So, and we are almost, it's, I can't believe Thanksgiving will be upon us and Christmas before we know it, it's gonna be 2021. So with that in mind, I thought following up on our conversations that we've had on our option strategies, uh, I thought it would be timely if we uh, kind of wrap it up in a sense uh, for now with something called covered call, which is the, it seems like it's the most basic of the option strategies. Uh, most people are familiar with, you know, just buying a call because they're excited about the direction of the market going up. Some people think they're negative. They want to hedge their portfolio, they buy puts. But there's so many other creative strategies and covered call is like the basis of it. And I thought it would be timely. There are some myths about it. So I'm hoping that we can um, kind of clear that. We can see where the opportunities lie and where are there some pitfalls? Are they, is this that uh, the, the, the glorious idea that everybody talks about kind of risk-free is like guaranteed or is there some of the uh, again, the risk that we take. So um, with that in mind, let's uh, dive in and talk about, uh, let's start actually, what is a covered call? It, the covered call is basically started when people had stocks, you have an underlying stock and they wanted to have a little extra income by selling the call options and collecting the premium. So. As you know, there's a naked call. Basically, if you are kind of thinking that your bias is at least for the near term is more negative or you are more of a, a flat neutral, then you go ahead and sell the calls to collect the premium. You're the one, you're the casino, <clears throat> you're the insurance company, you're the ones who are collecting the premium, you're the renter. Um, what happens with the covered call in this situation, you actually own the stock and based on the stock, you can go ahead and write the calls. And if there was a chance that it has to be exercised and you have to deliver your stock, you don't have to um, basically own the stock. And I will talk about the strategy, which we call a poor man's uh, um, covered call or the synthetic call at the end. But for now, we want to make sure, again, this is a very conservative strategy. So when you even apply for your, <clears throat> you're on TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab or Fidelity, this is the level one. So they allow you to have covered call. They don't look at your history, how much experience. They know as long as you have the stocks to back it up, that you are allowed to do that. So it's, it's wonderful in that sense that they allow you. Now, Sometimes you don't even have the stock, but you can actually initiate your covered call by buying the stock while you are actually doing the, the call option, purchasing that, or the selling the call option at the same time. And I will discuss it. We will look at an example of how that's done. So the bottom line is covered call is an enhancement strategy. And basically it increases a little extra income, but also reduces your risk. So why people do covered calls? Because it actually gives you a little cash flow. Again, it's almost like a rental property. You own your property and you just collect the rent. The beauty of this is you can do this as frequently as you want. And let's say if you do monthly, you can do this for 12 months. So if you have a stock that you really feel in a long term, it's going to go up. You've had it for a long time. You really don't want to sell it because of the capital gains. Then this is a good strategy to basically call, uh, sell the call and collect that premium. It also it reduces your risk because when you collect that premium, you are your basis based on that goes down. So. Also, what that means is the stock goes down, at least you collected some premium that it, it, the effects are less uh, visible. So as far as, um, as I mentioned, because it is a, a very uh, conservative 
strategy, it is allowed in your retirement accounts. And uh, let's say if you have an IRA, if you have Roth IRA, it is allowed and it makes it attractive to use this strategy. Also, it is very easy to understand because when you, you own the stock and you sell against it, you collect premium. So a lot of even novice um, or people who are starting in the, you know, with the option strategies, this is the first or the second, usually buying calls, it's, which is really, it, it, it is pretty, it's a lot of times it is risky because it's based on hope rather than strategy. With the covered call, it is strategy. And again, you have the stock and the money to back it up. So it is easy to understand. One of the things that the CBOE did, they looked at if people played S&P just purely, or they had the selling at the money. We will mostly talk about out of the money with our strategy calls. They slightly outperformed S&P 500. As a matter of fact, there are like ETFs, exchange traded funds that devoted purely on writing calls. And uh, the volume is not that heavy. I'm not gonna discuss it more. I'd rather you learn it on your own and kind of use a strategy, but there are some ETFs out there. And because of, again, uh, because of the return, it's because of when volatility is high, it also the covered call approach, what happens is it reduces your volatility of your returns. So in reality, what is a covered call is, let's assume you have a $100 stock, and based on that, that stock is at $100, what happens, you sell a 105 option, which is, it's out of money because you look at the future, you, you have a higher amount. Because it's 105, you collect $5 at the, at, you know, at the expiration. So what happens, if the stock stays below that 105, then you collect your full premium. And let's say stock is flat, even if it goes down, you still got that $5 premium. Now your break even is, not, remember you paid $100 for your stock, you're collecting that $5, all of a sudden now your break even is $95. So the stock can go to 97, 98, you still have, a, little profit in your and that's the beauty of this covered call strategy one of the things is you know again there was studies done and they looked at the spiders or the spider etf of uh, uh, s&p 500 and they looked at if there was no call if there was a purely stock what is the chances of you know being profitable what was average monthly return and what was the standard deviation of the variability. And they look at the at the money and out of the money. And I just want to share these numbers. This is purely on S&P 500. What I'm going to do, the strategies I'm going to talk about, it's going to apply for other ETFs, stocks, and you will look at the things that actually will be more successful than these numbers. But this is a long study done on based, like, based on averages of the S&P 500. So, as always, I like to use my own experience and that's what I think, um, just have to put that notation that it is, again, the things that I've used in the past. So hopefully it makes it easier. If you're reading a book about options, if you watch the YouTubes, if you go on um, Think or Swim or the Fidelity videos, you wanna watch YouTube, hopefully after watching this, things get a little, more clear and uh, make more sense. So, but these are the rules that I've used in the past. And um, basically I just thought to give you at least little um, guidelines that what look, look forward to. So my criteria number one, where do we select the candidate? So remember there are really two ways. Number one, you own the stock. You've had it maybe for a long time, you're very, comfortable owning it, you think in the long run, it will still gonna continue, but maybe it's flat, things are not moving. You don't really wanna sell it because of you don't wanna pay capital gains. And you decide to um, basically just do the, sell the calls on it to collect the premium. The second part is you don't have any stocks, but you like the idea, 
you like, you do have the capital to do this. So you have, you know, let's say you have a hundred thousand dollar in, you know, TD Ameritrade account, just, just uh, not favoring them, just being, you know, it's about the brokerage. You have the money, it's sitting there. You say, you know what? I really like this industry. I like this sector. I like to invest in this precious metal. Or I, I'm very bullish about, for instance, this technology stock. So basically you want to own the stock, but you also don't want to take a lot of risk. You want to make sure you have some type of an income stream. So you can actually at one time buy the stock and sell the cover call. And I will show you an example of how we're going to do that. So it doesn't have to be necessary your own actually stock right now. So you can do it together. So this selecting candidates is mainly for like marrying the two, but you also could have the same idea with your own stocks that you're actually owning it. So number one, as you know, cover call is very, it's a bullish bias because you have owned the stock or you're owning the stock because you're feeling it's going to go up. One thing is one of the mistakes when you, again, people talk about cover call, they go buy the stock based on they think there's a juicy premium on the call. So, and that's the wrong way of looking at it. If you want to do the cover call strategy, you have to be really positive about the stock and make sure you're going to own it at least for the next six months, or at least you feel you're going to own it for the next six months, unless really something great happened and you either got exercise or but your, your perception should be that th this is a fundamentally good stock to, to own. So um, that's rule number one. The second thing is you want to buy stocks for this strategy that they are very liquid. I've always emphasized when we do our option strategies, you want to make sure every little premium that you pay is taking profits out of your, your, your um, out of pocket. So basically you want to have a low bid ask spread. And also in order to do that, you wanna have in stocks that they have a high volume, high open interest. And the way to start it, I think some of the start that over 500 stocks with weekly options available. So we can, when we do a screening, that's what we wanna start. That doesn't necessarily mean they're liquid completely, but at least it's starting point. Now, the way I like to use, as far as if you're looking at the charts and you, really fundamentally did you did your work and you're looking at that and investments. I like to have an investments, which is maybe a bouncing off its support line. We have looked at the channels, for instance, rectangles, you look at Bollinger Bands, Keltner channels, basically somewhere that you feel confident that the odds are in your favor, the stock can go up. So basically based on that, that's where I will use my criteria to purchase this. And again, as a, as a um, strategy of having both at the same time, selling the call and buying the stock. Also there, another attractiveness, you can buy dividend paying stocks, just to make sure. And we will talk about the pitfall of that. Just, just have that back of your mind. But it, if you have that and this way, you not only collect the, 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 the call, but you also eventually can receive the dividends. Now, one of the things I would recommend, especially in the beginning, and you can actually play these on a weekly basis. You don't have to have the monthly. ETFs are more attractive than individual stocks. And the reason I say that is because with the stocks, you have the gap risk because the stocks can open up or down it could be more volatile based on the news. It could be based on um, earning news, it could be FDA approval or disapproval. So you will have this volatility. With ETFs is more established. It's a theme. So you can, and they're liquid. So it's a good starting point if you want to do the strategy. Some of the examples will be the spider we talked about. IWM, which is a Russell 2000, QQQ is NASDAQ 100, XLF is the financial sector, XLE is the energy sector, EEM is like the emerging markets, GLD is gold, you can do SLV. These are all uh, pretty liquid 
and they're, each one has its own really theme. So th that's, um, I find it is um, attractive to, to at least to start. Now, the second part is screening. Now, you have these ideas, the candidates, but what is like, if you want to dig deep and I want to screen, what is the best timing? So we know it's bouncing up. Usually when the stock is bouncing up, believe it or not, the implied volatility is actually is the, its own um, criteria ranking is um, it's in the highest. So what I look for is I don't look at the really high volatile stock, which means it's more risk. I look at that stock or ETF, which is the high implied volatility ranking. So if it's higher than 80%, and you can look at the charts, Thinkorswim has a screening for you. You can just go to the screening and it does give you, if you put 80%, 70%, it will do that under the screening. So we look at the stocks that actually gone up and because they're in the 80%, the chances of now coming down, it's much more interesting and more um, rewarding because you will collect pretty good premium. Remember that when you're selling the call, your whole objective is to collect as much premium as possible. So if the higher ranking, not the high volatility, not the VIX is up, or basically this stock is more volatile, it's been and based on its history and based on implied volatility. So as I mentioned, you can even look at the chart and look at the relative. You say, well, this stock is, you know, compared to a month ago, two months ago is higher. As a matter of fact, just a side note, it's really interesting the environment that we are in since the election, for instance, if you have noticed the VIX itself has collapsed, but the, the stocks are volatile. So one, I think this gives us an opportunity that the VIX has collapsed, but the stocks being higher than the implied volatility, these are a good time to collect some, um, you know, some premium, but also in, in a sense that looking for maybe expansion of the volatility as the VIX is down. So that, that's something to put with that. Now, the other thing I, I want to emphasize is make sure you look at the stocks or holdings that they're more than $15. I mean, the bare minimum, if you did, like some of the airline stocks, maybe you can do it's like a $10. But 15, the reason is, remember, you are collecting the premium. So low cost stocks, they're not going to offer you the, the, you know, the, the premium, which is worth for you to play. So that's why I think when you do your screening for the $15 minimum. And also avoid if there's an earning coming up a week from now or within two weeks or so, try to kind of avoid that because of the volatility involved in that which could expand actually. So in the near future, that's one of the things I, I look for to see if they actually had that, maybe earnings just had it, which we just finishing our earnings season. So you should have more candidates. Number three, I would avoid leveraged ETFs. They look exciting. You might think, oh, you know, I'm owning, uh, let's say, in this a QID, which is a short of the uh, NASDAQ, QQQQ, you, you own TZA, or these are leveraged. So they already are leveraged. So you don't need to, um, because of the volatility of it, it you want to avoid it. And also, again, you don't want to play uh, volatile stocks like, let's say, biotechnology, which is very news driven. Let's say FDA announcement comes and completely takes, you know, your stock can move up and uh, it, it can um, make you um, exercise or, you know, just hit your limit. And, but uh, basically, you want to avoid these volatile stocks. Expiration. So, what expirations do we use? Now, the rule of thumb is, again, you want to make sure we, we talk about theta. Theta is the time decay. And what happens in the, after, within the 30 days, after 30 days, and then we, the theta decay becomes more and more. That means that the premium that you've paid as a call um, or put right in and uh, purchase it, that the premiums are getting lower and lower in the sense that the 
extrinsic value, the time value is getting lower because now the time is getting closer and closer to expiration. So the probabilities are less and less is that the bookmakers, they have the odds in their favor. So what happens, you wanna make sure that if you're playing any type of, a, again, effectiveness is, is within 30 days. So if I'm the more, I would go out of money, let's say you say, well, I collect, if it's 60 days, oh, I can collect more premium. The odds are that because of the volatility, eventually, you know, you might um, hit your target, but you're not going to uh, collect all the premium you need. So basically the juiciest funds are 30 days to 45. 45 days is the maximum. So let's say if I'm doing one today, which is November 11, I would do December 18, for instance. It's better to do monthly, but a lot of liquid stocks or ETFs, you can do weekly. So you can go one to six weeks out, depending on what premium you're collecting. You wanna make sure it's worthwhile for you to have that premium. Now for weekly options, if you are doing again, Spider or IWM, don't go less than four days. So today, for instance, if you wanna exercise or play this um, option, basically sending based on your holding, what happens is Friday is too soon. You gotta go to next week and you go next Wednesday. So. Don't buy any weekly options less than four days. I mean, don't sell calls less than four days for expiration. Now, what about the strikes? All right, I have a hundred, I've used SLV for instance, the silver, but let's say you own Apple and Apple is $120 and you say or $116 or let's say just use 120 for simplicity. And you say, all right, I own Apple. And I think if it goes, I believe it's not gonna hit 130. And I, based on my Bollinger Bands, based on my channels, 130 is a good number. So you can use that as a collecting the premium. You say, well, I'm gonna sell December 11th, December 18th um, option on Apple. If Apple goes to that 130, then I will be exercised, but I, you know, it's 120 today. I will make my $10 plus I collected $2 premium. That's not a bad, you know, it's like made $12. Or we would say that Apple doesn't reach that. It goes to 122, 123. Well, I still will collect because it never reached that 130. But Besides the, the technical analysis, the way I look at things, I use Delta. And you've seen it, the, what is it? Everything we do based on the expected move, what is the option? Again, market makers, they look at the standard deviation. They look at what is the 68% chance of Apple or any other spider being in the money by Friday, by next week, by... Um, monthly expiration, December 18, November 20th. So they look at that and they price all the options based on that. So Delta is the probability of the money, of the um, option being in the money. That means it's gonna meet that objective. So my strike selection is, so let's say you're choosing Apple, we're choosing so like something like Tesla or Netflix will not be attractive because they're so volatile. So I look at Delta 0.25 or 0.35. So here I am, I have looked at, um, let's say gold, I'm just using that as an example. And I say, well, I wanna buy December 18th, which gives me about 40 days. I mean, sell, sell call, I own the gold stock and I own the GLD, I wanna sell it. So I go 40 days, With which of these strike prices are the ones that I want to sell. So I look at the delta and I look for the 0.25 to 0.35. So that's how my selection is. And that gives me again, everything we do is about odds. And the reason this covered call, sometimes we turn darts and say, oh, okay, I, I feel, um, you know, this stock is not going to reach that. It's just about, it does take some work it does take management. So you really want a manager. And this is a business, this is a trading business. So it's not like, you know, throwing darts and just hoping for the best. And that's what it makes the difference. So this is the criteria. If you follow 
again, you will be successful 65 to 75% of the time. Now, what about the contract, not contact size, I have to change that, contract size. So as you know, one call option or one put option, one option contract is equal 100 shares. So if you own 100 shares, you can sell one contract and collect that premium. If you own 500 shares, then you can sell five contracts. The question is, do I have to do that? Do I have to sell five or 500? Let's say you have a thousand shares. Basically, you don't have to. You say, well, I'm positive, but I'm gonna use only five of these contracts or 500 shares. And I leave the 500 to make sure, you know, the things go up and I will, um, I can, um, take advantage of, you know, maybe there's a big buyout or merger, or, you know, it's kind of an infinity, right? So when stocks can go to infinity, uh, I mean, if you are Amazon holder or Tesla holder, you can, you can testify for that. So what happens, one of the things you have to do is basically with these contract sizes, you can actually don't have to um, use all of them. It's not all or none. So one of the things you, you should do is um, I would recommend you want to stagger and instead of having 500 or five contracts or six contracts, I would stagger them. What I mean by that is I would do three different strike prices. You don't have to have all six December, you can have a different exercise crisis. You can do a different uh, uh, expiration dates. So this way you're really diversifying your portfolio. So you're collecting some premium here. And by doing this, you actually have, remember the biggest problem with the covered call is you're limiting your profit because if the stock moves to that exercise price, then that will be, or strike price, that's the limit of your profit. It's nice to have that. But if there was again, if there was a, a big takeover or something, you lose all that. So by doing this staggering and, you know, having a different contracts, you basically collect um, and you diversify your portfolio. Number seven is the execution. How do I do this? You actually enter the trade. Let's say you already decided you want to buy this you want to sell this uh, call option, Put, don't buy it at the market unless it's really liquid, like let's say it's SPY. Sometimes there's some bid and ask basically on, on this. So what do you want to do is put a mid price. I allow it about 15, 20 minutes. And all my strategies you've noticed when we do verticals and if it doesn't get hit, then I will kind of adjust it. But you want to, don't want to be really picky either. So if you're really sure this is the great, you know, this is a really good um, price and you're ready to go, again, with Spider, IWM, or QQQ, usually it's within pennies, then I would just get in. And, but if it's not, there's like some spread, let's say it's 95 cents and 105, bid and ask, then I would put at one. And I, wait another about 15, 20 minutes to get it. So what happens now with the stock, basically now you own it and now you have three things could happen for you because if stock can go up, stock can stay flat and stock can go down. So what are your exit strategies? What are you gonna do as far as, again, if the stock is having these three uh, movement. So one of the thing is you can either just close your account and close, you know, sell the stock and buy back your call, or we can do rolling. So with covered calls, sometimes it's more cost effective to do the rolling. So that's what I want to discuss next few slides. How do we do that? So rolling, what does that mean is you're actually buying back that short call that you actually had you know, let's say it was December 18th, you were thinking of holding it till the end. But because you wanna continue doing this, in this stuff again, just completely buying bad, you simultaneously sell another call 
in a farther dated expiration. So let's say it's Friday, December 18th, and really your, your call is like that's five cents, or let's say it's a Thursday. I would like to do a day before, at least a Friday. At that moment, you can actually look at another juicy, let's say it's January. So rather than selling it and waiting and then buying it, because again, this is covered call, what you could do, just roll it. It's very smoothly done. The price uh, disparity is kind of vanished just in case if you bought it and you covered it and then something happened. This way you can just continuously roll it to a farther dated expiration. So now what you could do also, let's say it is, um, let's say December 11th and you have another week to go and you feel, you know what? There's a better, based on dispar disparity and there's discrepancy in some of these premiums, look at the deltas and you say, you know what? If I change the same as December 18, if I roll it to, uh, let's say, another strike price, I will collect even more premium. So basically, you can actually do that. So let's say the stock has really come down. Maybe you want to roll it. So you're not really captive to just, I have to buy it, hold it to the, you know, till the expiration. It, it expires and I can do it the next week. You can, no, you can actually roll it and continue doing that. As long as, again, you are very positive about your stock holding, about your outlook. And uh, for instance, I, I've used, let's say this is November, this Friday, November 13, call 40. Well, you feel you can get a better premium. You just roll it and you can roll it to November 20th, call 40, for instance. Now, the other thing is, if you have too many holdings that you don't know and, you know, you like think or swim trade station they all have alerts all you have to do you do the right click and it just tells you alert so you can just put it on your covered call if covered call goes to a specific point this is 10 cents or something you just say alert me and they will alert you the other thing is it's very easy to do the roles when again you right click when it says close your order, or it says rolling your order, and you just choose the roll. okay? So let's look at some uh, scenarios. Let's say your stock is going down or is flat, because we use the same analogies, and you, you like to keep the stock. Then what happens if the delta is less than or equal 0.1? Because remember, it's going down, right? So you basically collect them, but your stock is going down. So if it goes below 0.1, you can either just cover your stock and buy it back, or you can roll it, find another delta at 0.25 or 0.35. Now, if these are weekly, then you want to use that four-day rule, right? So you don't want to go less than, you don't want to roll it to two days. Like, let's say you don't roll it to Friday. But you constantly, you're really managing your account. So in this situation, you collect that point one. Now you're getting, collecting a little more juicier premium. Now, on the other hand, and remember, you are planning up holding your stock holding. So you are really working on this to make sure that these are like, you're thinking that these are short-term hiccups, but long-term, they're going to come back. So this way, you're just maximizing your management. Now, if the stock is going up, which means your stock is making money, but you know what happens, your, your, the, the call is also getting into the money. And what that means is the premium that you collected now is getting higher. Your, your premium is losing its value in the sense that you really have to buy back that call in much more a higher price. So you're losing on your uh, short call, but you're making money on your uh, stock. So basically what happens, and this is before the exercise, let's say the stock, you know, like Amer the airline stocks, right? On Monday, everything just completely moved up. The, the casinos and the, uh, actually the leisure, the whole thing, industrials, the economic sensitive stock, they all moved up. And what happened was, or actually it was like last week actually, and that this whole thing, it moves up, basically you have to make that decision. Do I wanna hold my airline? Or do I wanna, if I sold it, let's say 
I have American Airline. I bought it at 11. It's at 12. Do I want to just completely pack and get out of it? Or I feel, well, I'm just going to maybe roll it more. So if your delta, if your call is in the money, and I use, let's say, something you bought is at it's 40, you bought a, you sold a 45 call, now you're at 45, you have to make a decision, do I just pack up and just cover my short call and just, just sell my stock? Or do you want to um, keep that and just keep going? So if that stock is at 45 now, and your delta is at 0.55 or 0.6, then this is a good time because you want to hold that stock, roll it to 0.25 and 0.35 to basically get the continue your with your holding. Now, again, as I mentioned, as your short call is being in the money, obviously you're losing money, but your stock is making money a lot faster than you losing. As a delta of let's say 50, that means your, your uh, option is losing 50% of the rate of your stock. So your stock could be up $1, your option could be down 50 cents, you're still net net making money. And that's what makes this um, cover call strategy very attractive. And I will give you an example at the end. So hopefully we're putting everything together. So just bear with me. Now, again, remember you can close the entire position anytime so what you want to do, if you're doing it individually, make always make sure you buy back your, your call option first. Because if you sold your stock first, then that will be a naked call. And you really, unless you're really managing risk and you're pretty much in control of it, you don't want to have naked calls or naked puts. But this is, again, the reason it's covered calls are attractive is because of uh, it is conservative. And... It is something that, especially um, in retirement accounts, they will not let you. All of a sudden, it comes out and says, wait a minute, you know, you have to do it either all at once, which you could. There's a button you hit, and I will show you how that works. And you can close it at once, or you can do one at a time, but you want to buy back your call first and then sell the stock. Now, with all these news that Okay, so it's wonderful. Why not everyone doing this? So uh, let me give you some cautions and the pitfalls of this covered call and why it's not all that, um, it, as far as it gets very glorified, but it, it's still not that 100%, um, that wonderful strategy that everybody's talking about. There are some setbacks. So. Number one, obviously, is the opportunity cost. And what that means is you're really limiting your profit. So if you, again, your strike price is 10% higher than where you are now, granted you collect that premium, but if there was really big news, I'd use Pfizer, for instance, or Moderna, or any of these, Lie Lilly, and they have these great news and the stock goes up 20%, your maximum profit, as far as the stock is considered, is that 10%. So you have that opportunity cost with the, with the covered calls. The second thing is a spike in volatility. What happens is the volatility might not affect the stock price because the stock could be still flat, but the volatility affects your option price. And what happens with the volatility, the price of option goes up. So as you know, you, you really want your option price to go down because you bought it here, you want to collect, you want to buy it. I mean, you sold it here, you want to buy it back close to zero. So when the volatility spikes, that also affects your covered call. The other problem is, is the dividends. Now, dividends are good, but what happens is it's, it's uh, when the stock goes ex dividend, and ex-dividend is the day before record date. Ex-dividend is when that you have to own, you be on the next day, be on the record of the stock saying that you are the holder of that stock to, in order to receive the dividends. Now, a lot of institutions, a lot of um, even, you know, big managers or even some individuals 
what they do, they actually exercise on the X dividend. So whether you like it or not, the call can be exercised. And that's the one thing you have to remember. And it, it, this question has come a lot that, oh, you know, I did sell my, um, I had a vertical or I had a naked call or put, and all of a sudden before the exercise date, it, my broker called me and said, it, my um, option was exercise. As you know, again, we are using American options rather than European options. So anytime the, the party, which is the buyer, has no obligation, but has the right to exercise this. So a lot of actually funds, they do come and exercise before the, right around the ex dividends in order to capture that dividends. But that's a danger that you have. And what happens is once they do that, then you know basically now you have to completely close your account. You don't even get that dividends. So um, that's important about the dividends. Now, if they don't, then it's wonderful because now you own the stock. The call option is going to be hopefully exercise, I mean, be worthless or be close to zero, and you actually receive the dividends. Now, the earning announcements, the news, the FDA, they all can move the price and consequently the volatility. The last thing about the, the I think it covered calls could be negative is the taxes. Because let's say you have a long-term holding. Remember, you will have two ways of taxes. Number one, you're collecting premium. That's your option, so, which is nice. I mean, hey, it's, it's better to make money and pay taxes on it and not getting anything. So that's one. But also maybe you've had a, this long-term holding on the stock. You really didn't want to sell it. And what happens if it is exercised, then you are forced, you have to sell it. And basically what happens is then you have to pay capital gains. So there's a double taxation. So that you have to, if you're not ready for that, then you shouldn't do this. So basically you can even play vertical spreads or other things, but this is another pitfall. And um, again, one of the things is you just wanna make sure this is a holding that you're willing to hold and you're aware of all the, you know, again, uh, I would say cautious. So I want to um, introduce you to something, which is, let's say that uh, you don't have a large capital. You love this idea, this cover call, but you have a small account. And in this situation, you don't have, let's say you want to buy Apple, 100 shares of Apple is $12,000. That's one contract. If I want to have five, that's $60,000. Now, is there any other idea that I could use and kind of similar to, to um, the discovered call? We call it synthetic because you really don't own the stock or other names is poor man's covered call. So how that works is instead of you owning the stock, you actually go ahead and buy deep in the money call. So you own, own an option, which is, has a longer expiration than what you were selling, you were planning of selling. And you wanna have it, make sure the delta is very close to one. In my situation, I would recommend 0.85 and higher. So by having that, so every dollar movement in the stock, here, you know your stock will move 0.85 85 cents to 90 cents, 95 cents. So in this situation, you are very close to holding that stock. So the way you wanna do it, if you're gonna have a 30 day from now, 40 days, then you wanna go about 60 days. You don't wanna go too far in that unless you really love the stock. So you, unless you wanna own it or you actually own, you want to own it, but you don't have the money, then maybe you can go for five months. But the way this, works the best is you want to have this deep in the money, let's say 60 days from now. In my example, I will show you an example is let's say I will own January, let's say um, January deep in the money, Delta 85, and I will sell December Delta 0.25, which 0.3. So I hope that's clear. 
And that's the reason you don't want to have leaps, which are the long-term expirations, you know, a year, uh, up to three years, 10 months. You don't want to go that long because of volatility, it will affect, and you don't really get, um, um, as far as um, um, the rewards is not the same. So you are, can also use weekly options. So maybe if you're playing, again, IWM or Spider or QQQ or XLF, Maybe you can, you're selling the one week and maybe you go out three weeks. So you can also do that. Now the pitfall of this strategy is we just talked about dividends. Remember the stockholders receive the dividends. So with this strategy, you kind of lose both ways because you're deep in the money. And what happens is you basically, you don't receive any dividends because you're an option holder. You are not a stockholder. And sometimes if you're short a call, you're responsible for paying that dividend. So this is something you have to be careful with. All right, it, uh, hopefully the time, uh, um, I want to put everything together. So I'd rather use an example. So hopefully that will explain everything that we talked about. So. Let's say I am, um, I'm looking at this chart. This is um, the ETF for silver, which is SLV. With SLV, I'm looking at the Bollinger Bands, which have been narrowing. I'm seeing silver is really close to that 100-day moving average. And I feel silver with all the fundamental ideas in next few months, actually, it's going to go up. So I like to own silver. I don't have... Um, that's why I don't, let's say I don't own it, or maybe even if I own it, but this strategy is attractive. It's something that I, I feel, you know, silver could go to $30 in, in a, you know, long term. So I look at this chart and I say, hmm, we are right at the support, as we mentioned. It's the lower, almost close to the lower part of Bollinger Bands, so 100 day moving average. What can I do with this strategy? So number one, I will go and I look at, as I mentioned, we want to go to December, you know, something I, I'd rather do uh, like 40 days for the to get collect good premium. So in this situation, we go to December 18th and then I look at the Delta and I want to see, you know, this is 26, 35. So I look at the 26, Delta, which gives the odds my corner. And I see, hmm, in this situation, it's the 25 call looks, looks attractive. And there's enough juice in it. So you can see the bid spread is 46 cents to 47 cents. So it's a pretty good spread. It's liquid. So this is going to be my, so I feel this is a good premium to collect. So uh, this is going to be my selling call. Let's assume I don't have the silver in my portfolio. So what I like to do, I like to combine both. I want to buy the silver at this minute and simultaneously sell the call of the 25. So I already checked the delta. I'm pretty positive. I could have chosen 24 because delta of 35, collect a little more premium. I chose 25. I looked at the Bollinger Band was 24, 25 was even higher than that. So I'm looking at that. I felt more comfortable for the premium that I'm collecting. If I had 10 Delta, it would give me more even more um, probability. So in this situation, I go and think or swim. And instead of doing single options, I use something called covered stock. So it covers stock simultaneously. I buy 100 shares of SLV. And I sell one contract. Again, for every 100 shares, you can sell one contract. And basically, it is a call. So in this situation, it's going to cost me $22.07, which is the, the cost of, let's say it was a $25.52 minus receiving this. So when I go look at, again, my, uh, as far as the maximum profit, you can see I can basically, if it expires at 25, because I'm doing the 
call 25. So I will collect $250, the difference between 250, um, this are 252, so I have $248 plus the premium that I collected. So of course the risk is if the silver goes to zero, then you know it's gonna go bankrupt, which doesn't. That's why I like ETFs. ETFs, like sectors don't go bankrupt. So that's one of the reasons I like it. So this is how it's done. This is basically, it shows you the break even. And um, so you can do this simultaneously. Now, the other thing would be, let's say I don't have any money. I don't have the 2200. So I, I thought just show you the idea of December 18th still, remember that you are buying the December 18th. I mean, you're selling the December 18th. You're gonna collect that 46, 47 cents, but you don't have the 2000 or 2200, 2250 premium or the capital to pay. So I think, okay, well, let me think about 60 days. In this case, it's like 65 days or so. Maybe I can buy January 15th, deep in the money, which is 87 Delta. And, and I will pay $3.85. So instead of buying 100 shares of SLV at 22.52, I'm gonna buy one call option of January, um, which is 19, so because it's deep in the money, it's $3.20. Delta is 87, that's pretty good. I pay $3.85 and in this situation, I actually own the, the, the call options and the silver, and there's an 87% chance that I still will be in the money. So I'm just replacing the stock with, with, uh, with the option. I, I thought even, you know, I looked at the March 19 because I'm pretty bullish on, on, um, on silver in the long run. So the Delta of 85, if I want to, it would have been $5 to have the March 19th. So let's put everything together. Hopefully this will um, help you just finalize exactly what we've been talking about and with an example to see where our risk, where our, you know, what are our potential profits. So with putting a use again, this is real example of SLV. I own the SLV. So here we are, let's say, Either you own 100 shares of SLV and let's say you bought it at 22.50 and you have a bullish bias for SLV and you decide to sell the December 18th call 25 for 45 cents in this situation. So we, we collected or the potential premium is 45 cents. Or I put another scenario, I said, let's say you don't have the money to buy this 22.50 hundred shares. How about if we bought, again, January 15, call 19 for $3.85. The delta was 87, which made our objective. So let's see what happens for the whole picture. First of all, the trade is that I buy 100 stocks at 22.50. The cover call is I sell the December 18, call 25. And for poor man's cover call, I buy the one January, call 19, and I sell the December 18, call 25. So, so far, so good. So let's see how much money out of pocket do I need? Well, for the stocks, it's very simple. We, for 100 shares, we pay 2250. There is no commissions. Most of the, again, the brokers, they charge no commissions. So it's 2250 for my out of pocket. If I, for my covered call, the same thing, because what happened, I put, because remember, I have to own the stock to be able to exercise this or to put to sell the cover call. So I still pay the same thing, 2250. But for the poor man's again cover call, I only need 385. So basically I could have owned six contracts or 600 um, shares equal to what I can do with 100 in this situation. So these are the food for thoughts. Again, there's risks and you know, again, this is a short term. And, so you really have 60 days on this, you keep rolling it. But this is just an idea. Now, let's say the stock went up $1. And I looked at it by December 18th, right? So it goes up, it's December 18th, we take a picture. 
what happens on December 18th. Your stock is up $100. It's great. So we have $100. It's December 18th. I'm happy. Made about 4 4%, 4.5%. 4 With covered call, you are still up $100. But remember, you collected that $45. All right? So remember, it, your covered call is at 25 So this expired worthless. So you collect every penny that you collected. So you don't, this is zero. So you buy it back at zero. So you made $145, which is four and a half percent more than your stock would have made. With the poor man's, in the meantime, we collect that this art in the money is up $87. Now there's a couple of things. Number one, the Delta was 87. So for every dollar, but also even looking at so Tinkerswim allows you to go change for every movement in your dollar. It gives you the projection. You can see projection on January 1st, what happens if the stock goes up 2%, which I think we can do a class just on that. And uh, basically you would make 87 plus, remember this covered call was expired worthless. So you collect 45, so you make $132, except you made $145 on 2250 here you made $132 on 385. So that's the difference. Let's say it's expiration again, December 18th. Now the stock is at $25. Now the $25, you make $2.50, which is $250 return on your money, which is pretty good, almost 12% or 11%. And then for covered call, again, it expired at 25. So it was not in the money, it wasn't 2501, it was not exercised. So at 25, you collect the full premium, $45 in your pocket, plus $250, that's 295. Now, when we looked at the poor man's, now instead of 250, we will make $233, plus 45 is 278. Not a bad return if the stock goes up to dollars What if the stock actually went down? It lost a dollar on the expiration, and the stock obviously loses one dollar. We lose one hundred dollars. That's the beauty of again covered call. Granted, you lost one hundred dollars, but you still collect forty-five dollars because you never hit that twenty-five dollar strike price. So now your bottom line is you actually lost fifty-five dollars rather than hundred dollars. If the in the money now. The interesting thing is you lose a little more because the delta keeps changing. Now you're in the money actually loses more money. So you lost $107 plus 45. Now you're down $62. The last scenario will be what if the stock is just flying? So went above 25, went to 26, 26 and a half. And you could do this like up to $30, but it doesn't matter. If it's above the 25, what will happen Let's say it went up $4 from the initial date that we had, it's December 18. You made obviously $400. But what happened here in this situation, most likely, again, remember, it hit that $25 and now your stock is exercised. And basically because it's exercised, the maximum gain that you will have, you will keep your premium, it's $45, but the maximum is that $250, which was that 25. And that's a setback in some ways for covered calls because it limits your profit. The same thing happened again with the in the money, you're gonna be the same as if it was exercised at $25. So basically this is, um, um, the reason it's good to stagger, it's good to have like a few shares of like the, uh, do the cover call on some, keep this other shares. So you could have still that um, more potential for profit. Right. So I'm running a little late. So I just uh, wanted to just make sure you understood the example. I mentioned about implied volatility. This is just again, Implied volatility is what is expected volatility based on, again, market makers with all the uh, black skulls and they look at what is volatility. Now, historical is what was in the past. 
And I thought this is just for your information, you will have access to slides. Just, just uh, you can have it for the strategy if the implied volatility increases, how it affects your, your call and put options. And if it decreases what happens, which is most of the time the opposite. So with that in mind, I really appreciate your patience and uh, I, I hope it was helpful. I hope it was uh, something that hopefully you can put into use. And even if you, as I mentioned, if you look at some other videos, hopefully it's a little more clear what the covered call is, which is in, in most cases it is pretty attractive. And it's one of the strategies that you should use. It's not the whole thing. You should have a part, a part of your portfolio and just uh, use that. So with that in mind, Sean, I think you can stop the recording and see if there's any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer those. So.